Our last topic in Chapter 6 is Related Rates. Um, in truth, Related Rates covers a whole broad spectrum of different types of problems, usually pretty difficult. If you talk to anyone who's taken calculus before, they will probably tell you that they thought Related Rates was, was one of the hardest topics in calculus. The good news is, in the interest of time, I'm not going to get into some of that very difficult stuff. We'll just talk about sort of the, the bare minimum of what we need to, to discuss for this course. And we won't even uh, do that many examples. This will be a pretty short section. So the idea here is we're, we're going to go back to implicit differentiation. This is why we did implicit differentiation before this, before this section. And usually in mathematical models, you'll end up with uh, variables that are in turn variables of other variables. So in, in this first example we'll do, we've got an equation involving x and y. But I'm telling you that x is actually dependent on another variable t usually thought of as time, and so is y. So as time changes, x and y actually change. So these aren't independent variables in and of themselves, they're actually functions of some other variable t. And what that means is if, if x is a variable or a function of t, and if y is a variable or a function of t, and over here x and y are functions of t, then this whole expression is really just an expression involving just t. t is underlying everything, you just can't see it. Right? So everything here is a function of t. And the point is, uh, what you want to do is you want to find things like find the derivative of x with respect to t, or the derivative of y with respect to t. And to do that, you'll have to proceed implicitly. We'll differentiate both sides with respect to t, but as we differentiate, we'll remember, hold on, uh, x and y are actually functions of t, so we have to be careful when we differentiate. And I'll show you right now how this works with this example, but I need more space, so we'll... Uh, We'll leave it on the board for now, but I'll use the top half, I guess. So, let's see. We were told we want to find dy dt. So, we have this relationship between x and y, and I had to remember, x and y are actually not independent variables, they're both functions of t. So if I want to find dy or dt, I better differentiate both sides with respect to t derivative with respect to t of the left hand side equals the derivative with respect to t of the right hand side. And by the way, uh, since this is a natural log, I would usually try to simplify this before if I could, because simplifying natural logs using log rules before you differentiate tends to make life easier. But log of a sum, I can't do anything with that. Logs of products, I can break up. Logs of exponents and stuff, we can work with. But log of a sum, I can't do anything. Uh, but here I have the derivative of both sides with respect to t. So what do I have here? I've got log of a giant function of t. Right? It's a function of x and y, but x and y are both functions of t. So it's log of a function of t. So chain rule says this becomes 1 over the inside. Right, derivative of a log of a function of t with respect to t is 1 over the inside times, and we'll do this in several steps, the derivative of the inside with respect to t. So I'm not going to compute that derivative yet, but the chain rule says it should be 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside. That's special case of the chain rule number uh, 3, I believe. And then over here, um, we have derivative with respect to t of a quotient. And this is a function of t over a function of t, so I have to use the quotient rule. And what is it? It's going to be low d high, the bottom, times the derivative of the top, with respect to t, minus high d low, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom, with respect to t, all over the bottom squared. And I want to save a few things here. I need more space, but we can erase the actual equation. I will save these values that we have. So I'm trying to remember not to erase that. Um, but we need to keep differentiating. So what do we have now? We've got derivative with respect to t of x squared. So remember how this works. This is a function of t. So the way I proceed is I first differentiate with respect to x. Derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. 
And now I tack on this dx dt on the end. All right, this was implicit differentiation from last time. So first differentiate with respect to x, and then times dx dt, because x is a function of t. Similarly, first differentiate y squared with respect to y to get 2y times dy dt equals, on the right, we've got y times derivative of x with respect to t, so first differentiate with respect to x to get 1 times dx dt, so I'll just write dx dt minus x times differentiate with respect to y, 1 times dy dt, which is dy dt, all over y squared. I think I'm going to have to erase this. Let's keep track of this up top here. dx dt was 5, x is 3, and y is 1. So we want to solve for dy dt. Algebraically, you should be able to do this at this point, no problem. But uh, since I'm given so many numbers here, since I'm given so many values, how about I just start plugging them in? I think this will make our, our life a little bit easier at the end of the day. I think, do we want to just do one more line of manipulation? Let's do one thing. I'm, I'm going to do it as, as it stands right here. I'm going to do this in situ. Let's multiply both sides by y squared to clear that right-hand side of fractions. Multiplying the left by y squared puts a y squared up, up top. Multiplying the right by y squared gets rid of that y squared down below. Now it wouldn't be too hard to solve for dy over dt by itself, but let's plug in these values. So what do we have? y is 1, so we're looking at 1 over 9 squared, x squared plus 1 squared, 9, sorry, not 9 squared, 9 plus 1 is 1 over 10, times 2 times x is 6, times dx dt. So I'm just plugging in these numbers. x is 3, dx dt is 5, that's 6 times 5 is 30, plus 2 times y is 2, dy dt equals y is 1 times dx dt is 5 minus 3 dy over dt. So what we probably want to do, I want to solve for dy over dt, right? Let's, let's try and isolate it. 30 over 10, 110 times 30 is 3, plus uh, 2 over 10 is 1 fifth dy over dt is equal to 5 minus 3 dy over dt. And that means, again, I'm doing a lot of this arithmetic in my head here, but that means uh, subtract 3 from both sides. I will have 2 on the right is equal to add 3 to both sides. That's 1 fifth dy dt plus 3 dy dt, 3 is, is how many fifths? That's 15 fifths. So that's 16 fifths dy dt. Just running out of space on the board, so we're doing this sort of mentally. But 1 fifth dy dt plus 3 dy dt is 16 fifths. And that means that dy dt, dy over dt, is 2 times 5 is 10 over 2 times 5 is 10 over 16. And usually my math lab says give me a simplified fraction, so you wouldn't write 10 over 16. Uh, divide top and bottom by 2, this is 5 eighths. So in truth, this isn't much different than what we were doing in, in the last section. All, all I've done here is implicit differentiation, right? Uh, slightly different from last time is we had, we said, okay, we've got this equation involving x and y. I'm going to think of y as a function of x, and we'll just differentiate both sides with respect to x. Now we're stepping the game up a little bit. We're saying, all right, I'm not thinking of y as a function of x or x as a function of y. I'm thinking of both of these as a function of some unwritten variable t. So as time changes, both of these change. 
and what we'll do is we'll differentiate both sides with respect to t. But after that, it's implicit differentiation. It's the same as last time. We'll do one more that's very similar, and then, uh, and then move on to a business type of question. All right, so very similar to last, last time. Here's an equation relating x and y, but underlying x and y, both of them are functions of t. Question is find the derivative of y with respect to t, the rate of change of y with respect to t, uh, if you're given dx over dt is minus 2, x is 1, and y is 2. If you understood the last problem, you should be able to pause the video here and go through this. It's, it's uh, completely analogous, just with a, a different, different equation. But we'll, we'll go through this now. So first things first, I want to differentiate both sides with respect to t. And then uh, start, start uh, applying these derivatives. First up, I've got a function of t times a function of t. So to find this derivative, I need to use the product rule. So what do we have? We've got the first function times the derivative of the second. y times the derivative of ln of x with respect to t. So what do I do? I first differentiate with respect to x to get 1 over x times, then we tack on this dx dt on the end. Uh, plus, I'm not done. Plus, now remember the second half of the product rule says the second function, ln of x, times the derivative of the first. So we first differentiate y with respect to y to get 1 times dy dt. So that's this piece using the product rule. Plus the derivative of x squared with respect to t. First differentiate with respect to x to get plus 2x times dx dt. And on the right hand side, exact same thing. Differentiate with respect to y, 2y times dy dt. How hard is it to solve for dy dt at this point? Eh. Right, what I'm tempted to do is just solve for dy over dt, isolate it by itself, and then plug in all these values. But uh, let's plug in these numbers right now. So y is 2, 2, x is 1, 2 times 1 times dx dt times minus 2 plus ln of 1. What is ln of 1? It's important that you know these things because, uh, because it, it, it helps. ln of 1 is just 0. So this actually disappears. Plus 0 plus uh, 2 times x times 1 times dx dt times minus 2. Do those cancel out? No, they add together. So that would be 2. Equals 2 times y is 2 times dy dt. So this one actually worked out a whole lot nicer than the first example. But what do we have? We've got minus 4, minus 4 is minus 8, equals 4 dy over dt. So solving for dy over dt, we have minus 8 over 4 is minus 2. And we'll do one more. We'll do one more involving, um, let's see, involving a cost function. We'll have a cost function where, our, uh, where everything is actually a function, an underlying function of t. All right, a lot of words here. Uh, so what we have, we've got a manufacturer has determined that the cost to produce X units uh, of a good per month is given by this cost function. C is 0.2 X squared plus 10,000. So we've got this flat cost of, of 10,000. Even if you don't produce any goods at all, it's, it still costs 10,000, which is a typical looking cost function. Um, the question is how fast is the cost per month changing 
when the production is changing at a rate of 12 units per month and the production level is 80 units. So in the past, what we would typically do is that we'd think of this as C as a function of X, C of X. And we'd find the marginal cost. We'd find the derivative of C with respect to X. We'd find DC over DX. Right? That would be the marginal cost. However, uh, here, we're told that X, the number of units we're producing each month, is actually changing. It's a function of time. Right? Depending on time, X changes. And the question isn't find the rate of change of, it, of C with respect to X, not find that marginal cost. It's find the rate of change of C with respect to T. So here's what we're asked to do. We're asked to find DC dt at, at a particular point uh, well, with, with some things given. Uh, find DC over dt if, what do we know? If uh, the rate of change of production is 12 units per month, so the change in x with respect to time is 12, and that's happening when our production level is 80 units. So that means when x is 80. So it's important to be able to read off those things and identify what we're asked to do. We're asked to find the rate of change of C, not with respect to X, but with respect to T, time, per month, um, if the production is changing, so X is our production level, if that's changing at a rate of 12 units per month, and the production is 80 units. So X, the production, is, is actually equal to 80. So we've got C. We've got C is 0.2 x squared plus 10,000. And what do we do? If I want to find the derivative of C with respect to T, I'd better differentiate both sides with respect to T. And now this is no different than the two problems we've done already, right? We've put some words around this, we've made this into a business application, but mathematically this is no different from the first two examples which were very abstract, but now the math is the same. How do I find the derivative of C with respect to T? I first differentiate with respect to C to get 1 times dc dt. And this should come as no surprise, right? These, these simple expressions like this, of course, the derivative is with respect to T of C is dc over dt. On the right, what do I have? I've got 0.2 times, first we differentiate x with respect to, or x squared with respect to x to get 2x. But then times, we tag on, times dx dt. Plus derivative of 10,000 with respect to t, that's zero. And last but not least, we just have to plug in these numbers. Um, what do we know? So, by the way, this is kind of interesting. Before I plug in the numbers, this will tell me the rate of change of, of my cost at, at, at any time. If I if I just know uh, if I know my production level and the rate of change of the, of the production level, but here we're asked to find it at a particular time um, when our production is 80. So 0.2 times 2 times 80 is 160 times dx dt, which is times 12. Can I work this out quickly? Um, Must be a nice way. 0 0.2 times times 160 is uh, 16 times 2 is 32. So that's 32 times 12. So that's times 12 is 320 plus uh, plus 64. 320 plus 64, 384. Does it give us any units? It must be dollars. So the rate of change of, uh, of the cost with respect to time would be $384 per, per month. Like I said, related rates is a, is a huge topic. There's, there's a lot more stuff that we could do with this. Really, really wonderful, interesting applications. But in terms of what we need for this course, the business applications, this, this should suffice. Thanks.